we played by the rules, and that is an important characteristic of Englishness. That we have lots of silly rules, and we regard them as extremely important, uh, and anyone who breaks them is a very naughty person. And I chose a cricket ball because I think one of the great things that the English have given to the world uh, is a love of sport and, and a range of new and difficult sports to play. Um, we often create a quite a difficult sport, uh, teach the rest of the world how to play it, and then they come here and show us they can play it a lot better than we can. Uh, but that doesn't worry us because we're English and it's play the game and may the best man win even if it's not one of your men. I'm still, I'm still struggling with the idea that apart from a sort of cultural space that John referred to, plays like Jerusalem, that, that the debate has been really propelled by the extreme, by the EDL and all that, and that do people sit around talking about Englishness? I mean, I've been thinking about it, I've always felt English, I, like you, I'm, I'm well, I'm half American. I'm, so, I bring, for me, Englishness has got nothing to do with any kind of purity, for a start, nothing. It is to do with the feeling, and I always feel my, most profoundly English when I'm in America, or some, you know, when I'm away from England. That's when I feel English. Shakespeare's England, before Scotland joins us, the last time when we had uh, an independent England without Scotland, uh, it was an extremely inclusive and welcoming community. And London in those days, as modern London, was the dominant economic powerhouse of the whole of England. In some ways it's very different from the rest of England. And one of its great strengths was it invited in all sorts of people from all, all around the known world uh, who needed to find a friendly place that would put up with their views and offer them greater freedom. There was quite an interesting question about this region in the Labour Party history, actually, that the, the gentleman at the back did touch on it. I mean, there's two basic traditions that are in Labour. One was centralising, the other was associating the independent Labour Party before they left, before they, sorry, in 1932, was strongly provincial. The whole first 40 years of the Labour Party, the dominant stream within it was highly provincial in its orientation, but that lost out and was subsequently exiled towards more centralising conditions. So part of this process has to re-embrace some of those exiled conditions around Labour about giving power away from London. That's not the same as simply embarking on um, huge exercises of regional governance. But if you want a new holiday, I mean the advantage of St George's Day is that the left will say they want May Day as a holiday for good left-wing reasons, and the right will probably say they want Trafalgar Day as a good holiday because it it has a vision of Britain's role in Europe they rather like. Uh, and uh, the compromise position is St George's Day. And actually all the communities embrace the flag, all the communities embrace the notion of St George. Um, Billy Bragg was reminded me earlier in the week actually we were doing an event that he wasn't totally English himself. You know, the, the, you know this, this is coloured um, and that has to be the cornerstone of this whole agenda to me.